guys. So there's some new information coming out in the Brian Koberger case. This is a case of uh, Brian Koberger is accused of killing four University of Idaho uh, students in their off-campus housing on November 20, uh, 13, 2020. In the early morning hours, they believe between 4 a.m. and 4.25 in the morning. The newer filings uh, that just came in. This is objection to motion to reconsider order dated May 4th, 2023. Come now, Brian C. Koberger, by and through his attorney, J. Weston Logsdon, Chief Deputy Litigation, hereby objects to the motion to reconsider order dated uh, May 4th, 2023, on the grounds that the media's motion to vacate the amended non-dissemination order raises factual issues that Mr. Koberger requires additional time to prepare. The media argues in its motion that it is irrepar irreparably harmed each day this court's amended non-dissemination order remains in place. In essence, the media argues that this court should grant temporary injunction against its own injunction it claims that this was the intent of the Supreme Court because it moved quickly to determine that its petition for writ was filed in the wrong forum using the wrong vehicle. What the media fails to note in the Supreme Court provides no such directive in its written decision. It also fails to note that the petition for a writ was a purely legal issue, whereas it has repeatedly argued the basis for entry or amendment of the non-dissemination order is a question of law and fact. See memorandum in support of motion to vacate the amended non-dissemination order at, uh, they got star 12. Media seems to be acting on the premise that the order should simply vanish now that it has arrived on the scene. Instead, this court has reasonably and correctly recognized that the proper path forward is a hearing where the parties may show what evidence there is of prejudice and the potential for prejudice to Mr. Koberger's 6th and 14th Amendment right to a fair trial from the removal of the non-dissemination order in this case. Because the media coverage of this case has been intense and because Mr. Koberger plans on providing expert testimony on its damaging effects, Mr. Koberger will require additional time and will not be prepared for such hearing on May 22nd, 2020. 23. Again, this is just coming in uh, May 10th, 2023 uh, from the uh, from Jay Weston, and that's one of the co-counsels of Ann C. Taylor, um, and, and it was hereby certified and, and delivered to everybody on May 11th. So there you go, guys. There is the objection to reconsider order dated May 4th, 2023. As many of you know, there has been a battle between the non-dissemination order and the Gonzalez family and the non-dissemination order in the collective uh, media and uh, associated press that is uh, suing. We had just received an order from the Supreme Court related to the same matter where the Supreme Court provides its opinion um, on this and the opinion even though they denied the uh, writ of prohibition and the writ of mandamus and the re def um, respondents i.e. the state and the county of Leyta were the succeeding party and um, the plaintiff or petitioner in the matter which was the associated media uh, were did not uh, establish proper jurisdiction in the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court was citing the fact that uh, they didn't give the lower courts an opportunity to uh, modify the order. Well, now this order is being needs to be modified according to the Supreme Court um, opinion. The Supreme Court opinion has stated that the way that this order is written uh, does provide standing uh, for these uh, collective media organizations to uh, go after the courts for violating their First Amendment rights uh, and the freedom of press because the way the order is written. So she is going to have to modify that order. So I'm wondering if she's going to continue forward with that hearing on May 22nd um, and just modify the order in accordance with that 
um, opinion from the Supreme Court. And then, you know, at a later date, they can remodify it when um, the defendants are ready. If this order is not it is not a done all. I mean, it can be modified uh, depending on how things do go in court and what other issues do arise from lightening the uh, restrictions, so to speak, and things of that nature. So it seems really, really interesting that the defense is fighting so hard to keep people quiet. I really truly believe that the way that the defense is going is they don't want anybody being able to talk about Brian Koberger in the least because if people know about Brian Koberger, it's going to be harder for her to defend against it. That's, you know, there's other avenues, change of venue, things of that, that um, uh, uh, you know, things of that nature that can um, happen so he does have a fair trial. So I don't think that there's really a whole lot that the defense can provide that's going to um, stop the judge from modifying this order that the Supreme Court has ruled is unconstitutional. So at this point, I'm hoping that the judge does not do this. I'm hoping that the judge decides to modify it and then listening to arguments or just saying we're going through with it. I've got the opinion from the Supreme Court. We've been holding off. They, it, it's, not like, it's not like the defense didn't know this day would not come. They've had plenty of time to prepare for this because this um, request to, to modify this non-dissemination order was from the Gonzalez attorney months ago. They've had more than adequate time to prepare for this hearing. I'm interested in your thoughts. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. God bless you and have a great evening.